Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. My daughter is 19 months old and this week I took pictures of her breakfasts, lunches, and dinners to help document our weaning journey and hopefully bring some inspiration out there for any parents trying to feed their toddlers. We eat a gluten-free and dairy-free diet and um, as well as trying to limit the amount of processed foods um, our family takes in and increase the amount of organic produce our family eats. So you might see that reflected in the meals. Um, my daughter is still breastfeeding twice in a 24-hour period and has a lot more teeth than the last time I filmed the video. So um, you might see that reflected in her portion size. She's eating a lot more, in other words. Um, so hopefully you follow along and enjoy. Breakfast this morning was hot amaranth cereal and I just cooked the amaranth very similarly to oatmeal and I used coconut milk and blackstrap molasses and then on top is chopped banana with some crushed raspberries and some raw granola and raisins and the raw granola is super easy to make it's a recipe by Lonnie Jane and you just take gluten free oats um, uncooked and pitted dates and some unsweetened coconut flakes and just pulse them until it kind of makes a, a chunky granola type texture. And this breakfast was completely devoured. My daughter was very excited to see pomegranates back on her plate. So we had some pomegranate seeds this morning and um, a Food for Life baking um, multi-seed English muffin, which I toasted and put some homemade cashew butter on. And then there's a scrambled egg there with some baby spinach. And of course she ate every bite of this. Bread is kind of a treat in our household and she doesn't get it a lot, but I do think this um, particular brand and bread is, is pretty good. This morning we were having waffles and we have waffles a lot actually. Something that everybody really loves. And um, of course I had to make them green by blending a little spinach in them. The recipe for my waffles is all over my Instagram page if you just look up um, the pictures of all the waffles. It's pretty much the same thing. The base of it is gluten-free oat flour. And then I just make the regular batter and blend some spinach or kale or whatever greens I have on hand into it. And this day I put more pomegranate seeds on top, chopped up some strawberries, and then made a little puddle of blackstrap molasses, which we like to use a lot because it has a ton of iron and calcium in it. And it's kind of fun for dunking, I think, for the waffles. And then my daughter was really, really wanting these pumpkin seeds, and so I thought maybe soaking them in the molasses a little would soften them, and it turns out she could eat them. I had to monitor because I think they could be a little bit of a choking hazard, but she seemed to really enjoy them. This morning I had an abundance of pears that were going ripe all at the same time. So I chopped them up and coated them in a little cinnamon and lemon juice and put them in a cast iron skillet and then um, warmed them up slightly and topped them with a bunch of gluten-free oats and some um, a good sampling of seeds and um, some crushed nuts. Made like a crunchy kind of topping with some dates too, chopped dates in there and put it in the oven until it got kind of golden and it made a really yummy um, cinnamon pear crisp. And then I also served that with some fried eggs. My daughter loves eating oatmeal in the morning and so do I, but sometimes I kind of want like a fruit or a vegetable along with it. Um, so this is what I call carrot cake oatmeal and that's just really making your oatmeal like you would any other kind. And I use coconut milk and a little molasses when I'm making my oatmeal. And I just grated a carrot into it, threw a bunch of raisins in there and put in some kind of autumnal spices like cinnamon and ginger and clove. And, um, Cooked that up and chopped a banana and put some unsweetened coconut on top. This is kind of a lackluster picture, but this was a really yummy lunch. I got um, some wild salmon on sale, and I like to prepare my salmon in a few different ways, but this is one of my favorites. It's a little bit of maple syrup with some red chili paste, so it's not too spicy, but it gives it a little bit of a kick. 
And then I just baked that and served it with some mung bean threads or glass noodles cooked in coconut milk. And there's some steamed green beans on top, a little bit of that citrus ginger kraut we're always having. Um, the brand is Azuke. If you're interested, it's really tasty. And there's some green grapes there that um, before she ate them, I cut them in half the long way. This is a lunch that kind of represents a lunch that we have a lot, which is um, hummus and my daughter just seriously can't get enough of hummus. The first thing out of her mouth in the morning is hummus and cracker. I'm not kidding. She loves hummus. And this is actually a store-bought organic hummus and I usually make my own. Um, I think I had gone to the store this day so I just picked some up. And I sprinkled some hemp seeds on top. Above that is some steamed cubed um, sweet potato, some red rice and quinoa rice cakes, that I cut into little squares, and a clementine, and some um, cucumber sticks so she could dunk them in the hummus. We were kind of on the go this day, and so this is kind of like a half a lunch. Um, there's some steamed carrots there, some green grapes. That is a buckwheat cracker on top with more hummus, and then um, underneath that was a little like no cooked granola bar type thing I made with oats and puffed rice and it had pumpkin, pumpkin seeds and almond butter in it as well. Um, when my daughter woke up from nap she kind of had the second half of lunch which was a big portion of um, vanilla chia seed pudding with some fruit on top. I accidentally made a rainbow lunch. I didn't mean to but it turned out um, with a bunch of cool colors. So here we have some chopped strawberry, the rest of the steamed carrot from the day before, some steamed peas, and um, that is the red rice and quinoa rice cake with some cashew butter and some homemade um, pomegranate blueberry chia jam. Chia jam, if you have not tried it, is so easy to make. And um, you just kind of mix your chia seeds with whatever fruit that you can cook down or even raw and um, set it overnight and if you want that recipe exact recipe check me out on Instagram I have a lot of my recipes there this was a lunch of um, steamed white rice and some broccoli and some pinto beans that I cooked from scratch and it looks kind of boring, I think, um, but right before that, or an hour or two before that, my daughter had a bunch of fruit and a little um, pumpkin muffin that I had made. And I forgot to take a picture of it, but um, that was kind of like the other half of her lunch. So I don't know if you noticed that happened before um, earlier this week, too. We do a lot of like two-part lunches um, just because we're on the go so much these days. This night we were having some pan seared, kind of lemony flavored um, wild snapper. And next to that, I roasted a spaghetti squash and um, used a little tomato sauce and some fresh basil and parsley from our garden and um, put that on top of it. That was really good. My daughter really liked this. Um, it was her first time having spaghetti squash, I think. First time since she's been able to kind of like tell me if she likes dinner anyway. <laughs> and she really liked it. Um, above that is some cucumber and a couple um, pieces of yellow tomato. This dinner was stuffed butternut squash and I used a recipe by the Sprouted Kitchen blog, um, which I'm a huge fan of. And I had a big butternut squash, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, so um, this was called squash boats with quinoa. And so I stuffed the butternut squash, well actually I roasted the butternut squash with a little maple syrup and olive oil and then once it was done I stuffed it with quinoa that had some cardamom and um, chopped pear and basil and shallot and some, um, spinach. So it was really, really tasty and I kind of deconstructed it for my daughter 
and put a little bit of the mashed butternut there. Um, she's not a huge fan of that mashed texture, so I put a few steamed um, and cubed sweet potato, which she liked so much better. She actually only took one bite of the butternut and gave me a face. <laughs> but she loved the quinoa, and um, I served it with some um, grape tomatoes, and then there is some random cashew butter on the side, and it doesn't really go with the meal, but my daughter was really wanting cashew butter that night, so I had made a fresh batch earlier in the week, so I just put some on her plate, and she was very happy about it. Oh, and my plate has a little salad. This night was a really random meal night, and um, it's a really good example of what I do when I have a bunch of like leftover things and not quite sure what to do. I oftentimes make a savory style pancake and my daughter just loves pancakes. And so I took um, some quinoa that I had left over from the night before um, that I hadn't mixed anything into, so some plain quinoa. And then I took out some white beans from my freezer stash and mash those into the quinoa. I made a little like flax meal egg to kind of stick it all together and threw some peas in there and also some fresh herbs and made little patties and they were so random but they were really good and um, I also served that with some cremini mushrooms that I sauteed with onions and some thyme and then there are more steamed carrots up there which are one of my daughter's faves. This night we were having al bondiga soup, which is a Mexican soup made from um, tomato and zucchini and other delicious uh, vegetables and herbs. And then the meat balls themselves I made with a grass-fed ground beef and leftover rice and some grated carrot. And um, this was actually pulled out of the freezer. I had made it, I think, maybe like two weeks ago. And um, I like to make a huge batch of soup when I make soup and keep some in the freezer for nights that I'm kind of running late. And my daughter loves this. She could not get enough of it. Um, I use the recipe on food.com for this and I just make sure to um, choose grass-fed beef. And then I also omit the chorizo and add more zucchini. So that's how you can make this recipe. I highly recommend it. And then um, I served a little sprouted corn tortilla um, alongside it, and she actually just ended up throwing it in the soup, which was better anyway, because it softened it up. Rounding out our week of meals is some coconut chicken. So I just took some chicken tenders, organic chicken tenders, and um, coated them in a little bit of coconut flour and also shredded coconut. And I'm noticing I used a lot of coconut this week. I must have been in the mood. So I um, pan fried those and then I also made a spring roll, which I kind of pan fried also in a little coconut oil because I find that I love to make spring rolls for my husband and I, but I find that for my daughter they're kind of really chewy. So when I when I fry them up, it kind of stiffens the rice paper and helps her get through it a little bit easier. So the recipe I used for the spring rolls is actually from Weelicious, and I've done it before. It's so delicious. It's got a ton of vegetables in it. So like carrot, I use um, Brussels sprouts, shaved Brussels sprouts in there. There's mushrooms. Um, I even put some bok choy. So I kind of use the recipe from Weelicious to get the flavors, but I use my own kind of vegetable mix. But I will tell you, it is just delicious. The sauce is kind of like a sesame oil with rice vinegar, and I use a little coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. So it's really, really good. And I wrap that in rice paper, and then I serve that with some diced cucumber, and um, some of it has a little bit of sesame seeds and rice vinegar. I didn't know if my daughter would want that, so I only put it on one. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will do more of these in the future. Um, and just as a side note, I want to let you know that this is not exactly what we eat every week. We also eat snacks throughout the day, but hopefully it gave you some good ideas of maybe what you could do to feed your hungry toddler.